So, my name is Jose Rodriguez. I'm with uh, La Frontera Nos Cruzó. Uh, I've been a student activist for the past two years. Um, and a couple months ago, I uh, finished school and decided to get more involved in community activism. Being Chicano myself, I felt just more of a natural fit to move to immigration as like a key point in, in my activism. When it comes to SB4, the way I, I see it, and it is mostly in terms of legalized racial profiling. Uh, you know, there is more reason uh, on the behest of not just uh, police, but other government uh, agencies to pull over individuals for any amount of suspicion or suspicion of. Uh, with penalties, right? So the first violation, six months. Uh, second violation is up to 20 years, so it's not something small, right? That's the time they're giving uh, big drug dealers and these big, you know, dangerous criminals get that, you know? So for you, for that time to be placed on someone just for being here without actually committing a crime, okay? Definitely need to be careful um, just to kind of put things into perspective. Last year in October, I did a study, right? I studied the legislation that the Texas House and the Senate had going. There was so much hate there. There was, uh, there was legislation that they didn't want our children to go to school, to not have access to a hospital. So the hate that it represents is a thing. Um, not to mention the fact that if, you know, I worked as a violence interrupter for the city of Dallas. One of the biggest issues that I kept hearing from the city and the police department themselves was their lack of connections into our community because of mistrust. This is only going to deepen that. You know, SB4 is a very serious attack on not just our community, but on all people, right? Because the standards and the doors that that law opens can and will be applied to all people, you know? So it's, it's a danger. Uh, anytime one one group of people decide to attack another group of people here just for simply existing and trying to survive, that's a problem, right? Historically, it's always been a problem, and I feel that SB4 is that historical moment that we have to push back on, right? The consequences uh, really are very, very, very deep uh, because it sets a, it sets a tone, right? So it, to put it, a lot of times, you, you know, we talk about one law, like if it's just that one law in itself, you know, separate from all the other things that are going on, which is not the truth at all, right? It's just a piece of the whole uh, approach these uh, groups of people are having towards our community, right? Our brown community, which is immigrant, you know, very big immigrant um, part of it, right? So these attacks, the danger of it is sometimes not expressed the way it should be. For me, it's, uh, you know, it's just creating a boogeyman. And there, I mean, I don't want to exaggerate, but there are parallels to, like, anti-Semitism in Nazi Germany, you know? Like, they convince everybody that the problem in the country is Jewish people, and people that have never knowingly met a Jew begin to think, oh, all my problems are down to Jewish people. Well, in this country, you have a lot of people who think their problems are down to, uh, you know, to immigrants. And so you have you know, the governor of Wyoming or whatever saying there's a crisis at the southern border. I mean, what, what does he know about it, right? He's in Wyoming. If there's a crisis at the Canadian border, maybe that's something he would know about, right? But there's no, there's no crisis. There's no disaster. There's people coming up to the U.S. because their own countries have become unlivable. A lot of times due to what the U.S. has done, you know? Of course, we had the huge wave of Hondurans after the U.S. backed coup in Honduras, and the U.S. just stays messing around in Latin America, doing things that advance U.S. interests at the price of the, at the, at a cost to the people in those countries. And so people in those countries end up coming here. The U.S. sanctions in Venezuela are the biggest reason that Venezuelans are coming to the U.S. Um, so the U.S. messing around in Haiti, which it has deposed a couple of Haitian presidents, is definitely part of the economic crisis in Haiti that's caused Haitians to come here. The response uh, to Haitians trying to make their way to the border, uh, where they brought out horses and essentially reenacted a scene from the 1800s, um, 
where they would push uh, you know, Haitians, black individuals, back in, into the river, and they would say, you're not welcome here. And what is the response we get from uh, the president? You know, Republicans, we might expect this, but the president says, oh, uh, well, next time we just won't do horses. That's, that's not the point we're trying to make. We're trying to make sure these people are safe. The response we get is very minimal, the re or if we do get a response from any federal uh, body, it is to kowtow and to uh, lean towards the Republican side of things. Of No, we should uh, close off our borders. We need to shut off our borders. Um, and it just becomes a national dialogue of us versus them. Like I said, there's never been a time that the United States wasn't in a, a conflict and this is just the type of language that they're going to continue and continue to use uh, to justify awful, cruel behavior towards, um, you know, our people. Right now, I have already seen uh, fellow organizers contemplating leaving Dallas and leaving Texas, really leaving Texas. And to me, that's a very sad situation because I mean that they have won. They wanted to put fear in us. They wanted us to stop living the lives like the way we were supposed to live them. I think we have a lot of great organizations. We have some great uh, elected officials. We have some good support to make sure that basic human rights are not trampled on. The unfortunate thing is that this piece of legislation basically legalizes racial profiling. Because in many ways, even in sanctuary cities, um, you're going to have a safety net and you're going to have some protection. And we're going to make sure that Dallas, both as a city and as a county, has as much uh, opportunity for for this to happen in regards to like a sanctuary city or some kind of safety for our community. Um, but the thing is that sometimes, in many cases, you're at the mercy of whichever cop pulls you over. As far as what's going to happen with SB4, I mean... My number one message to people is uh, know your rights and don't panic, right? So what this is going to do is it's going to mean a certain number of police officers essentially act acting as immigration agents. So you get, might get pulled over for, a, for speeding and the cop might decide to ask you where you're from or something like this. And well, the thing to understand is you don't have to say, right? He can ask you anything he wants. You don't have to answer. You can say... You can say, I want to talk to a lawyer. You can say, I'm not answering questions. And you should do those things. You do not out yourself. If he asks, do you have papers? Just say, I want to talk to a lawyer. Don't answer that kind of question and get yourself into trouble. Of course, the reality is this is going to cause fear. And that's a, that's a big problem for a lot of reasons. And, you know, the reason that even a lot of police officers and certainly a lot of police departments are against this kind of thing is because the other part is if an undocumented person is a witness to a crime, are they going to be willing to come forward knowing that the police may end up? Now, and the law says if you're an undocumented, if, if you're a witness to a crime, the police should not investigate you for immigration. The law does say that, but I don't know that people are going to have too much faith that that's going to really be, be followed the way that it, it's supposed to be. So creates a lot of problems, but you can you can keep yourself out of most of those problems simply by knowing your rights and not answering questions that you don't have to ask and should not ask, such as where are you from and what's your immigration status. The one thing I'd recommend for a lot of people is talk to people about this. Talk to your coworkers about it. Talk to your family about it and start opening up conversations a lot more uh, because without those conversations, it's going to be something that people just assume what they hear on on the uh, on, on Fox News, what they see on CNN, and if that is the prevailing discussion, then that's going to be what sustains the most. And uh, you have an active role to to participate in the way these narratives go. And um, talking with your community is one way that uh, a lot of those uh, disinformations are going to be debunked and pushed aside. There's an old Mexican proverb that I believe they, that it is, and they say, it goes like this. They say, um, they try to bury us, but they didn't realize that we were seeds. 
And to me, a lot of times legislation that try to uh, attack us and that um, what they do is that they unify us and they make us stronger and they make us more aware of you know, who the aggressors are and making sure that we stand up for our, communi- for our community. This is what happened in Arizona whenever a legislation like that happened in SB 1070. And now Arizona is blue. This is what happened in California uh, during the 187, 183, the, the law that happened like that was also against the immigrant community and now California is also blue. So Texas is the largest, Texas now the majority is Latino. You're attacking the largest population. And what in this area of, of fighting, like I said, the first thing is making sure that we're taking care of the most vulnerable communities and that's the immigrant community. And so making sure that they have the resources and education to be protected, not to be afraid to continue to live their lives the way they ought to live. Um, but those who have the opportunity to advocate more, to make sure that we vote people out of office that are you know, against these laws or th- that are fighting, you know, to pass these anti-immigrant laws, that we vote for people in office that are sitting in their butts while real fighters need to be placed in office that will stand up for our community. Um, I feel is the thing to do, especially in a very important local election cycle. There's there's a lot of important state, state house, state senate seats that are up for open. Uh, for example, we, we can take somebody like Ted Cruz out or we can uh, take somebody in, uh, put somebody in Congress here in our North Texas area. So, um, yeah, we must advocate, uh, but also protect our community. Right. Uh, we are organizing a march, uh, the March 24th. Uh, the reason is to really to galvanize our community, right? Uh, if we want to do any change, if we want to have any effect, in anything really, in any choice, we want to have our, our voice heard in any choice, we have to show unity, right? We have to show strength and unity that we are willing to put some of our differences aside and unite behind it, right? So that's what the purpose of that march is, and really to gain even more steam to take the fight further, right? Like I said, this fight's not just gonna end on the streets, right? It's gonna go to the courts, uh, it's going to be fought in the political arena, right? So it's going to be a big deal. So we need to make sure that we're ready for that by being an organized community uh, throughout Tejas, you know. But let's start with DFW ourselves, right? So we need to be organized and united to prepare for the fight. So the march is not the fight. The organizing we're doing right now is not the fight. This is us preparing to be able to fight to strengthen our position, to make sure we have powerful leaders in place that we're supporting their work, that we're behind our organizers, that we're hitting our community events, that we're showing unity through sharing flyers. Any single thing we can do is needed. We've done it before. It's not an impossible task. 10 years ago, or little was that mega march we had with George Bush, Thousands, tens of thousands of people marched in Dallas for the same reason, and this is worse. So yes, we have done it before. We are united. Don't let them lie to you. We are. We can be one people. So that's what this is for. The march on March 24 is to show that we are united people. That collectively we say we're saying no to SB4, to Greg Abbott, and to all the racist hate that's been directed at us.